Hello, I'm Jill at Ingvid, and today uh, we have a lesson on Shakespeare. And uh, this is a way of uh, introducing you to some of Shakespeare's plays. And I'm giving a, a quotation from each one um, to illustrate uh, also what Shakespeare's language looks like. Okay, you may be familiar with it already, um, but this is also a way of introducing it to anyone who, uh, who hasn't really uh, read Shakespeare or heard Shakespeare very much before. Okay, um, obviously it was written a long time ago, uh, a few hundred years ago, so the style is very different from modern English. So um, where it's difficult, I will do my best to explain the meaning. Okay, so we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six examples here from six different plays. And uh, some are tragedies, some are comedies. Uh, one is a history play. So Shakespeare's plays divide up into these categories of tragedy, comedy, history, and other types of play as well. So let's have a look. And I've also included the dates of when they were first performed. So uh, just to give you an idea. So let's have a look then, the first one. Um, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. Okay, so a villain is um, a bad person. So if somebody who's a bad person uh, smiles and they're really nice to you and you think, oh, what a nice man, what a nice woman. Um, but sometimes it may not be true. So uh, sometimes they may be a deceptive person. So, so Hamlet himself says this about one of the other characters who is a, a dishonest character in the play because it's a tragedy. Um, it's a, a very sad and serious play. It has a bit of humour in it as well in places, um, but uh, it's, it's a tragic story. Okay, so Hamlet says that, and the play itself is called Hamlet. It's one of Shakespeare's most famous plays um, about a prince whose father has died. But rather than him becoming king himself to follow his father, his uncle steps in instead. So um, that's the, the basic um, situation. And so Hamlet is really talking about his uncle here. You know, that he, he can smile and smile and, and be a villain. That one, you know, one meaning a person, that a person can smile at you and they're, they're a bad person and they're being dishonest and deceptive. So that one may smile and smile and be a villain. It's a comment on a human nature, a certain type of person who you can't really trust, you can't believe them. So that's from Hamlet. And uh, these numbers here, because Shakespeare's plays uh, divide up into five acts, and within each act you get separate scenes. Uh, there are five acts, but within each act you could have a different number of scenes. That varies. So this quotation comes from Act 1, Scene 5. And what I've done, I've used the, um, the numbers, the, the normal numbers for the Act numbers, but I've put the scene numbers in Roman numerals. Uh, there are different ways of doing this, but this is my own choice. So Act 1, Scene 5, and Hamlet was written between 1599 and 1601, okay, in, in the Elizabethan period when Queen Elizabeth I was on the throne. And you can see my other video on, on that subject of um, different periods in history. Okay, 
Uh, right, so next one. So this is from a comedy. And um, it's from A Midsummer Night's Dream, okay, which is a, a play about what happens to some people who go into the forest on Midsummer Night, the middle of summer. It's meant to be a sort of magic time. Uh, so somebody, a character says, Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. Uh, so ill met, uh, this is actually, uh, Titania is the queen of the fairies and the person speaking to her is Oberon, who is the king of the fairies. So they're a couple, Oberon and Titania are king and queen. A uh, married couple, I suppose, if if fairies get married. Um, but um, uh, so, but the trouble is, why ill met? Meaning, oh, you know, he's not very happy to see her, really. Oh, it's you, is it? That sort of thing. Um, ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. He's criticizing her for being proud. And she, they've had an argument recently. They're not talking to each other. Um, so he's not happy to see her and she's not happy to see him. They, they didn't really want to meet like this. Um, so that's what he says. Oh, it's you, is it? That sort of idea. Um, and uh, they are part of the situation, the magic of Midsummer Night's dream. Uh, where fairies are in the wood, but some humans are in the wood as well, and everything gets quite complicated. Um, but these are the, um, the the fairies who live there, the sort of fairy community with their king and queen. Um, they have their own hierarchy, just like the human society has, um, uh, well, a duke who's in charge and then the people um, in in his society. So, okay, that's it. And we've got M and M, a little bit of alliteration, which is always interesting, sort of sound pattern, ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. Okay, right, next one from King Lear, which is another tragedy. And this um, quotation um, illustrates the, the tragic side of human life. So this is King Lear himself speaking. So he says, when we are born, we cry that we are come to this great stage of fools. So this is what he thinks about the world. He, th he thinks the world that we live in is a great stage of fools. And that's ironic because it's in a play. So Shakespeare does this from time to time. He, he uses the word stage um, in a metaphorical way. But what you're doing, you're watching actors on a stage already. So it has a kind of double meaning in it. But King Lear is not happy things have gone badly wrong. He's divided up his kingdom. Uh, instead of staying king, he's divided his kingdom up between two of his daughters um, and uh, they are treating him badly. Um, they just want to get on with life and being um, in charge of the country and he, he's lost his power and uh, he's not happy at all. So he says when we are born, if a baby's born, when the baby's born, uh, the baby often cries immediately. It's a way of, you know, because the, the baby's lungs are filling with air and it's all a bit of a shock being born, I suppose. I don't remember, but I guess it is a bit traumatic. So the baby will cry to be out in a new environment. So babies do cry when they're born. But he's saying the reason that they cry is because, oh my gosh, where am I? I'm in a crazy place now, a, a great stage of fools. So it's a rather clever kind of thing to say, really. 
um, that that's why babies cry. So that's from King Lear, Act 4, Scene 5, and I forgot to say Midsummer Night's Dream, Act 2, Scene 1, uh, 1595, and King Lear, a little bit later, 1605 to 6. So this was actually in the next period, the Jacobean period, um, Elizabethan period had gone by by this time because Queen Elizabeth I had died in 1603. So then James I came to the throne. So this is in the Jacobean, it's called Jacobean age. Um, so a bit later. Right, so then we move on to a comedy again, uh, although it's rather a serious comedy. Um, the thing about Shakespeare is you could have a tragedy, but it will have comic aspects in it. And then you can have a comedy and it will have tragic or potentially tragic um, elements in it. So they're, they're not pure tragedy and pure comedy. They're a bit of a mixture. So The Merchant of Venice is called a comedy, but it has quite a serious uh, story in it okay so this is the merchant himself called antonio and he says the devil can cite scripture for his purpose so cite means to quote to quote from scripture meaning to quote from the bible okay scripture here with a capital s means the christian bible okay uh, a book of authority. So he's saying the devil can, can quote scripture for his own purpose, you know, which is rather strange. Why would the devil, who is the bad person, quote from the good book, the Bible, uh, but he does it for a purpose to influence people. And it's sort of a general comment that people can do that. People do quote from the Bible just to support their arguments, you know, and to give their arguments some religious authority. Um, it's quite a controversial issue, really, but that's what he's saying. Uh, a bad person can quote from the Bible uh, for their own purposes, right? Okay, so that's from Act 1, Scene 3, and that play was written 1596 to 7. So another comedy, which is more comic than this one, I would say, but it does have a, a little episode of tragedy in it as well. But things improve after that, uh, towards the end of the play. It, it is a comedy. So this is uh, one of the comic characters, Benedict. Um, and he he's a man who um, has no intention of ever getting married. He thinks it would be a disaster, you know. Um, but then people trick him into thinking that the, the female character, who he's always having arguments with and joking with, uh, the, the people trick both of them into thinking the other one has fallen in love with them. Um, and so they they do fall in love with each other because of that. So Benedict, who's a sworn bachelor, if you say a sworn bachelor, someone who has no intention of ever getting married because they prefer to be single. So he says, when I said I would die a bachelor, I did not think I should live till I were married. You know, I just didn't think it would ever happen. Uh, so, you know, I said I would die a bachelor, but oh, well, I didn't know, you know, I would actually be getting married. Uh, so things have changed now uh, because he thinks this woman is in love with him and and she um, she thinks he's in love with her, but their friends have tricked them into that. So it's a really funny comic plot. Uh, so that's Much Ado About Nothing. The titles are also very interesting of some of Shakespeare's plays, Much Ado About Nothing, meaning uh, a lot of 
fuss, a lot of trouble about nothing. Um, the whole play, it's a, it's a play of five acts and it's strange for a playwright to give it that title uh, or oh, a lot of fuss about nothing, much ado about nothing, but it, it's a comic title for a comic play. Um, and so that's from Act Two, Scene Three, and that play was written 1598 to 1599. And then finally, a history play, Richard III. So um, this was a real king in English history. So Shakespeare wrote quite a lot of history plays, which were based loosely around English history. Um, so this king uh, was regarded at the time as a, a bad king, um, as a villain, this word villain. He was regarded as a villain. Uh, people, uh, historians nowadays, um, you know, think uh, perhaps he wasn't so bad. Um, perhaps he was made to seem like a villain by the people who took over from him, the Tudors, um, because they wanted him to appear worse than he really was. Anyway, he was king, but he was in a battle and it's the battle towards the end of the play, Act 5, Scene 4, right near the end of the play. And he's in the middle of the Battle of Bosworth, which happened in 1485, and he was killed in that battle. And that's how um, the, the, the new king, Henry VII, uh, the Tudor king, uh, took over um, took power after that um, and he's um, he, they would have horses if they were fighting a battle in those days a lot of them would be on horseback especially the king and all the aristocrats there would also be soldiers on the ground standing on the ground fighting as well but all the you know the top people would be on their horses and he's been knocked off his horse um, and he's standing on the ground. Uh, he's in a, pos a vulnerable position. He needs a horse to get back up onto. And he, this is a very, very famous quotation. A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. So he's willing to give his kingdom in exchange for a horse. He, in a way, he's willing not to be king anymore. If someone would just give him a horse to, to be able to get up on and be, be safer on horseback than he is standing on the ground. So um, that's a very famous line. And also, um, a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. It's pretty much the um, the line in Shakespeare when it's in poetry, the metre is in sort of five main beats. My ho A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. You can more or less count the what's called the iambic pentameter of the line. Even when he's in a panic, he's speaking in a kind of iambic pentameter meter that's the standard meter for in Shakespeare's plays. Uh, some of the plays, parts of the plays are in prose, but a lot of them are in, in this poetic meter. So that's that one. And of course, he doesn't get a horse. Um, he gets killed uh, and then the, the new king takes over. So that's from Act 5, Scene 4, and it was written in 1592 to 93. Okay, so um, I hope that's been, if you haven't really looked at Shakespeare before, and also to say... Um, you know, you, you can watch a lot of film versions of Shakespeare, which are an easier introduction to the plays uh, than uh, trying to sit down and read uh, a printed, published play. It's quite hard going to sit down and read a play uh, by Shakespeare because they're quite long in five acts. 
So it can take a long time to get through them and the language isn't always easy. So I think, you know, to get the overview of a play, uh, to see a film version of it is, is a good way of starting. And then you can always sit down and read the play um, gradually, bit by bit. Um, Afterwards, when you already know what the story is, it makes it a bit easier. Okay, so um, I hope that's been a, a helpful lesson for you. And uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon. Okay, bye for now.